What we're going to look at here is a different way to figure out derivatives. And it's a way that's a little less common and definitely not what we're used to. This is a generic derivative set of questions. We're very used to them saying, OK, f of x is a particular function. Find the derivative when x is 5, something like that. But in this case, what you'll notice from this information that's presented is we don't know what actually any of the functions are. We're very generic. For example, when you come up here and you look at what h of x equals, h of x, we, it's not, we're say, not saying it equals 2x squared plus times 5, what it's saying is it's equal to two functions that are being multiplied. And then we have to not only figure out the derivative, but we have to figure out the derivative at a particular value that we're plugging in, which is 4. And that's where this table is going to come into play. These are problems that are extremely common on the AP test, and they're things that it takes a little while to get used to. I think once you get used to them, you'll find that they're not very difficult, as long as you know your basic derivative rules. When you start these generic problems, the first thing you want to do is look at your function, see how it's defined, and determine what rule is necessary. Is this a product, a quotient, a chain rule, a trig function? What's happening? So in this particular one, we have f times g, which immediately should indicate that it's a product rule. So we're going to write down our product rule, but we're going to write it very generically, because we don't know what f and g are. So our product rule is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, now that we have it written generically, we have to think about this idea of the 4. The 4 is going to take the place of all your x's. So what this is really saying is, what is f of 4 times g prime of 4 plus g of 4 times f prime of 4? Here's where this table comes in. At first, it's very overwhelming, so you really don't want to look at it right away until you're ready to figure out how to use it. So this problem is saying f of 4. So you go to your table. Here's your f column right here, and you're going to go to 4. f of 4 is negative 6. And then g prime of 4, here's your g prime column. g prime of 4 is a half, so it's 6 times a half, negative 6 times a half. g of 4, here's your g column, g of 4 is 5. And then f prime of 4 is negative 1. At this point, it's just a matter of arithmetic. So we have 6, negative 6 times a half, which is negative 3 plus 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. So our answer is negative 8. This represents the slope of the h function at x equals 4. For the second one, I wrote over it a little bit, but I'll come down here and talk about it. We have a function being divided by a function. Hopefully, that's an automatic quotient rule. As soon as you see that, you want to make a little note to yourself. This is a quotient rule. So your quotient rule, a little longer, is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Now, as you get more comfortable with these, you might want to immediately start putting your number in, because you know in the end you're putting 3 everywhere. Or you can go straight to the answer here and say, well, I know this is going to be asking me what's g of 3. So g of 3, you go into the g column, g of 3 is 2 f prime of 3 is 4, minus, don't forget the minus sign, f of 3 is negative 2, and then g prime of 3 is negative 5, all over g of 3, which is 2, but you have to square that, so you get 4. So you end up with 8 minus 10, which is negative 2, over 4, you end up getting a numeric value of negative 1 half, negative 2 over 4, which reduces to negative 1 half. The third one is the one that is most commonly missed. This is looking at a chain rule. Um, a lot of times what you're realizing, you look at this and you see this f of g of x. The first thing you need to think is, that's a composite function. And what I mean by composite function is it's a function inside of a function. Anytime you have a composite function, you have to do a chain rule, which we tend to do automatically, but we never think about how it works. A chain rule, we always say, is power out front, power one less, derivative of what's inside. But the actual generic formula for it, which it is really important to remember it, is it's the derivative of the outside with the inside unchanged times the derivative of what's inside. It's what we do with an actual function, but we don't always think about the symbols that go wor with it. So now we want to figure out what happens when we put 3 in. So this is saying f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. 
So we work inside out. G of 3, you go into the G columns, G of 3 is 2. So this is actually saying F prime of 2 times G prime of 3. Working at the bottom of the page here. F prime of 2, here's my F prime of 2, it's 6. G prime of 3 is negative 5. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. And that's how we do a chain rule generic. Probably the toughest of the three is that chain rule, because first you have to recognize that it is a chain rule necessary, and then you have to remember the generic, which the generic doesn't doesn't recite itself the same way as maybe the product rule. You say it as you do it. Same thing with the quotient rule. But this is a great one to practice to get ready for a test on derivatives, because you will see things like this in your test, and definitely when you take an AP test.